Hello, thanks so much for joining us again. And I'm so pleased I've got a uh, soprano extraordinaire, Fiona Fraser, joining me in the Zoom room today. Fiona, it's so good of you to come and chat. I wonder, can you just tell our uh, devoted listeners a little bit about yourself and your your musical journey? Yeah, so um, I kind of got into music through Inverness Cathedral. I was brought up in the Highlands and um, the director of the music there suggested I might enjoy singing. So I joined the choir and it was the best decision I've ever made. I absolutely loved it. And he was kind enough to teach me how to play the organ as well. So I then went to um, St. Andrews University with an organ scholarship um, and kind of halfway through that decided that actually I was quite jealous of everyone in the choir and really did want to be in the choir. And so um, kind of got into singing fairly late on through that. And then I did my master's at uh, Cambridge and so sang with Trinity College Choir then. And so that's kind of the journey. Amazing. And then I moved to London. Yeah. And then all, all hell broke loose. Um, so, <laughs> so tell us, so each choir I look at, you, you're involved with, you know, some some pretty big names, Seaglow, Tenebrae. Um, I wonder, can you, how, how did you get involved with so many choirs? Like, is it a case of being in the right place at the right time or you sort of it's very impressive to to me <laughs> um, I think it's a, a combination of, of lots of things and something I've kind of learnt as I've found my way through you do get a lot of work from auditions making sure you're kind of on top of who's hearing people when they're hearing people but also so much of singing is about um, kind of the social side of it you know because if you, you you need to make sure you're meeting as many people as you can uh, because you never know if someone might wake up one day, they can't speak, they've got a really sore throat and they think, oh my goodness, who am I going to text and say, can you come here um, and do this? And that's kind of how you get into a lot of things that feel um, quite closed off because a lot of people don't necessarily do auditions because they kind of want to know someone else trusts you and that's how they're kind of willing to hear you. So that's been a really big part of getting work. And so especially when you kind of move here first, just making sure you're kind of available to kind of come in and save the day in that, you know, you're around the corner and you can be there for a 7 a.m. start and that's fine. It's really important um, and it's been really helpful. I think that kind of that social scene to choral singing is maybe a bit understated, you know, like the, the do, do you feel that group dynamic, you know, how the group works together aside from the rehearsals is, is important as, as, you know, how as other stuff as well yeah i think it's so important because um unlike lots of other jobs you know these people are people you're kind of semi living with sometimes in that you might you might go on a three-week tour with them and so you have to get on but you also have to get to a place where you can kind of be honest enough to say I'm feeling a bit socially saturated today i'm going to do my own thing or just you, you do have to be really comfortable with everyone you work with. It is a very, very sociable job. Yeah. yeah it's a big part of it, I think. So in terms of, like, going on tour and those those three-week windows, um, you're, you're talking about... Uh, is tour work quite... I imagine it to be quite exhausting. It's not something I, I really do much uh, an, anymore, but is it is it a tiring experience? Um, yeah, in, in lots of ways, in that you... I suppose you build up a kind of backlog of tiredness because you're never just going home and sitting on the sofa by yourself for two hours and thinking, okay, right, I'm, I'm ready. And so it is in that way, but I also, it's definitely some of the most fun I've ever had. And it's it's really that thing of, it's the same as, um, you know, in, in university, if you kind of went on a trip together, you do get to know people in a different way. And it's quite a bonding experience and I yeah it's really it's lots of fun those trips from like school and, and university those tours as you say I think are the most memorable the, the the most memorable bits rather than you know sat there writing an essay or something you know it's not gonna <laughs> not gonna stick in your stick in your mind so yeah. say like um a certain unnamed choir offers you uh, a massive fee to come and do something but you've already got a booking with a certain unnamed other choir how do you approach that situation because it's something I I I find really difficult to kind of um, come up with a solution to. I am totally with you 
on this. Um, it's I don't think I could say that I've cracked this in that my kind of nature is very, very much to be, if I've said I'm going to do something, I will absolutely do it. And so actually the only time I would ever kind of ask to be released, you know, I would never say, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'd always ask and try and help find someone to cover it. I think is if um, the thing you're offered, say is three weeks and the thing you have is one day in the middle of that or something. That's the kind of way I have justified it. I, I think I would struggle with a different kind of balance otherwise, because you also just get yourself into a bit of a twist in that if you've got at the back of your head, everything in your diary is negotiable, it means it's quite hard to structure yourself and feel like you know what you're doing. And I kind of seek that out quite a lot. So that's why I'm quite stick to what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're, you're quite right. It, I imagine gigs can be like London buses, sort of you're, you're waiting for a week or so, and then they, they come in on the favourite like November dates or December, wh whenever the, those high points are. So that's just the nature of it. But I think that's good advice for people like stick to what is in the diary as much as you possibly can. Um, I, I would just yeah. add someone gave me some really good advice, which does help in some ways as well, though. Um, a fixer who I, I respect a great deal said that he does like to know that his singers are busy. So never feel terrible saying, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, I can't do this. They, they like to know that other people think you're good as, as well. So you don't need to worry about it. I yeah, I, I think some people sit on the fence in maybe replying to gigs, don't they? So you sort of send up like a, oh, can you come and sing for this event? And then they sort of wait a day or two and you're like, can they do it? Can't they do it? And I think you're right. Like it, it, one is prepared to have a, a, a no, sorry, not free, because then you will ask them again because you know they're going to kind of reply to you. I do worry, though, like there is an expectation that people have to be constantly checking emails and texts and WhatsApps. And do you, how do you cope with that kind of, um, you know, the constant interference of like social media and messaging and stuff? Yeah, it is a tough one, isn't it? I think I have tried to take a bit of a, um, I don't know. So now I try not to check my phone kind of after 7, 8 PM because ultimately if it's if it's an emergency someone will probably phone you you know if, if they need you for next day or or something like that and it just i think you need i think the most important thing is remembering that to do your job well you need a break um in every sense of the word and if you are constantly on alert you're not going to do a good job for anyone including yourself so but it's a really hard the the scroll is real you know the, the Twitter sitting there just but also you know it's it sets you up to compare yourself in a slightly unhealthy way to other people which is also so easy to do but if you can avoid it, it it's nice <laughs> I think it's very much like an ongoing uh, <laughs> challenge isn't it I, I mean even this morning I was I had opening Facebook and I was thinking oh yeah you weren't playing the proms were you th this year <laughs> whatever it's, just, yeah. it's like the 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 reality of we set up an expectation for ourselves as performers and if we don't meet that it can be quite difficult to yeah. cope with um I, I suppose that is especially true for 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 singers and the kind of compact you know comparing um to to one another how how do you how do you deal with it have you got any strategies any tips for like people just starting out about how to just stay with your own Work I think and life. the thing that's helped me the most has been making sure that I'm always having singing lessons and there's always a part of kind of technique that I'm working on so that the only thing I'm kind of comparing myself is to myself. I think if you set yourself up as your, your own competition, that, that helps a lot. Um, and also it's just a good thing to do to kind of make sure you always feel like you're improving. Um, so that that has helped me a lot, but but also just kind of reframing the way you see other people. Because in in any given rehearsal, if you kind of listen to everyone individually, everyone has their own strengths. The the better at different things, and once you kind of let yourself appreciate that and think, well, they'll probably get booked for this thing because I can hear that they're amazing at that, and this person will get this. And once you kind of let yourself just be really happy for other people 
it does get better and it does get easier but it's it's a hard process to get through yeah. i think <laughs> um moving to the 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 sort of the lighter side of of our work i i i want can you think of any instances where you've um where something's gone kind of wrong in a in a in a gig i i, I always find this question difficult because i can never think of a particular moment but is there anything that's that's happened kind of in recent years where you thought oh no what's just happened yeah so i have this terrible personality trait and i have it for a lot of things so for instance if someone's trying to explain to me how to play a board game as soon as they start explaining my brain will switch off i, I can't help it i just you know i really i do try and i have terribly the same thing for um kind of choreography within a concert i just i just can't because also i'm not very physically um i don't know i find physical things quite hard um so there's been these kind of awful concerts where everyone else is suddenly i kind of come to and i realize that everyone else is in different parts of the church and they all very much look like they know what they're doing and there was one horrible concert where i was at the back and realised that I had to be at the front for this piece to start. And so just had to do that thing where I stopped the whole concert and walked down the aisle by myself and I could see the kind of fury of the person conducting and it was, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. And it's not even something you can kind of make a joke about because in the moment it's just so embarrassing. You know, thinking, Why, how did I, how can I not? it's just it's just completely unavoidable but so um just impossible i mean the the, the thing for me is with with ipads everybody seems to be using ipads now and and they're, they're all great until it until it does completely go wrong you know something or the battery or the um all of that dies but no i'm sure there are others who can relate if something like I guess what can happen then is like the choir can be like, oh yeah, nice, you know, nice, uh, nice that you got stuck at the other end. How do you? Is there kind of that sort of banter within choirs and like, it, it, is it good not to take that too personally? Yeah, I think those kind of things are really good for me because they force me to laugh it off. You know, if, if it happened to someone else, you'd make a really big effort after the gig to make them find it funny because otherwise it is really embarrassing and you just have to. You just have to let yourself find it funny, otherwise, you know, yeah. it's one of those things. <laughs> so if there was like a, a student recently graduated, um, coming to the London scene like this term, this year, whatever, are there like three tips that you might that you might uh, give them to sort of say, right, this is how you get set up? They can be very general things. But... Hmm. Um, I guess the, the thing we've kind of talked about before, which is, make sure you are meeting as many people as you possibly can. Um, I would also say, um, don't be afraid to kind of explore other avenues. You know, lots of people sing full time, lots of people do some teaching, they do workshop leading, they do lots of other things. And it's, it, it's all about kind of finding the balance that suits you. You know, you don't have to have the, the same career as anybody else. Um, and also, I would say, make sure you're always having lessons and thinking about, you know, the way you're singing. But I think the main thing I wish someone had told me was, um, you know, it's it's amazing to do a job of something you love, but you also have to remember that it is a job and you have to kind of let yourself have those boundaries, you know, because it's such a personal thing and it can become extremely personal and just having that kind of um background of okay today was a work day didn't go as well as i would have liked tomorrow's another work day and i can try again i think is really important um, it sounds like staying pragmatic about your your approach to to work is is important and not kind of letting it because it's so easy, isn't it, for to, with, with with phones just to let it kind of take over every aspect of your life. So you're thinking about it like all night and then, yeah, it can become very <laughs> stressful. So I think you're quite right. And and not underestimating the amount of like time and effort that goes into a concert. People think, well, it's only 7.30 or 9.30. It's only two hours of work. But it's not. it doesn't necessarily work like that, does it? It's the preparation and the um, all the all the rehearsal and stuff that goes on before it. 
Fiona, thanks so much. Just as a laugh, I, I before the um, interview, I, I downloaded three uh, common, like normal interview work questions. So maybe I, I'll give you a quick, a quick fire round of um, typical corporate work questions. Great. What type of work environments do you prefer? I really enjoy collaborative environments where everyone can have their opinion and feel like they're part of what you're producing. Do you prefer working independently or on a team? I love working as part of a team. How do you deal with pressure or stressful situations? Um, twofold. Uh, I do, I've done a kind of quite a lot of work on um, mindfulness, so making sure that your focus is kind of stronger than any outside pressure. Not saying I'm an expert, sometimes it still doesn't work but um but also making sure that for every pressurized thing you have something in your life that kind of releases the pressure so if you like running or you like something else just making sure you're always balancing those situations out fiona fraser thank you so much for joining me it's been an absolute pleasure all the very best thank you so much